they get judged and then that's how they sit in the kingdom the other nations either serve the children of israel or die so their judgment is set so that lets you know who the letter is like if i write a letter to tony and you grab the letter you can't look at everyone all of you all of us to include you and your people because the letter is written to tony you just happen to be reading it so that's the bible y'all like white people, Africans, Chinese, Japanese happen to just read the Bible. And because it says everyone, all of you, whosoever, you think it includes you. But the letters were written to a specific audience. All right. Proverbs 11.1 1 says a false balance is an abomination, but a just weight is his delight. And as I have stated throughout this series, Romans 3, 1 and 2 says, what advantage then has the jewel? Or what is the profit of circumcision? Much in every way. Chiefly because to them were committed the oracles of God. So this passage informs us that it is an advantage to the Hebrew. It's not a guarantee or exclusivity for the Hebrew. So your salvation is not guaranteed just because you're a Hebrew. And it's not automatically condemned. Because you are not a Hebrew, all right? It just means that you're disadvantaged if you're not a Hebrew. And I've talked about in this series, faith deficit. The Gentiles have a faith deficit. In other words, the new covenant is based entirely on whether or not a man or woman is born again. Okay, and this is determined by the judgment of God who searches the heart of men and determines who is tares and who is wheat. Okay, he sends his holy angels, of course, to do that. And I'll get to that a little bit later. So I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 13, and then I'll come back to what Tazariak had to say in his clips. So Matthew 13, starting at verse 1, it says, On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together with him, so that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Verse 6, But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Now, this is where it comes in handy, where this Romans 3, 2 says it's to an advantage that the jewel, the oracles of God, were committed to them. Keeping in mind, again, the sacrifices of God is a broken and contrite spirit. So if you don't have a broken and contrite spirit, you have no roots in Christ. Okay, that's one of the signs of evidence that you belong to Christ. Because the scriptures say, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. All right, but it also says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Okay, and that's talking about the word of God. So verse 6 here is referring to a root, okay, a root that has withered away, okay, because some know the word of God, but they don't practice it. And some used to read the word of God, they used to have a relationship, but they backslid, okay, and scriptures talk about a great falling away. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Verse 9, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, so Matthew chapter 13 starts off, he leads with the parable of the sower and the reaper. Okay, so let's go down to, let's go down to verse 24. Okay, so says another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field see that i wanted to parallel verse 24 starting at verse 24 with verse 1 through 6 uh, matthew chapter 13 because still is talking about seed 
Okay, I've talked about this in previous videos. You're supposed to produce fruit. Okay, the fruit begins with the seed. But when God was talking about man being fruitful and multiplying, you know, people who practice polygyny took that out of context, saying that you're just supposed to be producing children. No, that's why the scriptures say, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay, now you've produced fruits. For this parable, Christ is referring to it as seed. All right. So the man sowed good seed in his field. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, see that? The grain sprouted and produced something. It produced a crop. Okay, continuing. Then the tares also appeared. Now, now he's talking about a generation. Okay, because you got crops amongst the tares. The crops is the wheat. Verse 27. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? Verse 29. But he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Now keep that in mind. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, let's go down to when Christ gives his interpretation of this parable. Okay, so going down to verse 36. It says, Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. Verse 37. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. Okay, so when God created life, that was the seed that was sown. Okay, man was fearfully and wonderfully made. The scriptures also say God made men upright, but he has sought out many schemes. Okay, Job chapter 14 verse 1 says, man who is born of woman is of few years and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow and does not continue. Okay, James 4 verse 14 says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Okay, man is like, like dust. He's just vapor. So verse 38, The field is the world. Let me repeat that. <laughs> it's paramount that you get this. The field is the world. Okay, there are black people in the world, there are white people, Gentiles of all sorts of backgrounds and walks of life and religions and so forth. Okay, that's the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sold them is the devil. Of course, that's obvious. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Verse 40. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, why, do we, why, why does Christ need angels to go and separate the tares from the wheat and to gather them into his barn? You see that? They weren't doing that in the Old Testament. In Leviticus chapter 13, 
Okay, Moses and the Israelites, particularly the Levitical priesthood, they had a separation, a consecration of the Israelites in the camp. Okay, remember the, the Old Testament is a shadow of the New. Okay, so their salvation was physical consecration away from the heathen nations. And we all know that God commanded them not to integrate with the heathen nations. Did they listen? No. But that's a whole nother story. Okay, my whole point is that the holy angels were not necessary in service in that manner under the old covenant to separate tares from wheat to determine salvation. You see what I'm saying? So I'm saying all of that to say this. My job is to warn the Gentiles that they have a faith deficit, which means they're at a disadvantage. Okay, but that does not mean they cannot be saved. Okay, because there are people who are of the seed line of Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, but they're not regenerated in their heart. And because the fallen angels corrupted the bloodlines of men, Man is now, when he does not receive and accept the application of the blood of Jesus Christ, he's now subject to being a son of the devil. That's why Christ said, ye are of your father, the devil, okay? The devil is literally a father, okay? Because he corrupted the bloodlines of men by mating with Eve, okay? That's why Eve has a perpetual menstrual cycle. All right, I've talked about this in my Polygyny is a Package Deal series. Okay, if everything that God made was good, right, and Adam and Eve sinned against God, why is it that Eve, after they fell, Eve was cursed with a perpetual menstrual cycle? All right, so I just wanted to resurface that and let you chew on that a bit. All right. But the angels are now involved in the new covenant. They were not involved under the old covenant. So that's telling you that there are tares who look like wheat. Remember the scripture also, Christ said, Satan can appear as an angel of light. So you can be a Hebrew of the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and still be a son of the devil. You see that? And that's where I'm getting to this whole ordeal with I-S-U-P-K, all right? But I'm going to let him talk, and I'm going to budge in. And so when he says, you know it was our fathers, your fathers didn't pass under that cloud. Your father didn't pass through that sea. Your father didn't do that. Your father didn't either. My father did, because I'm the ancestors of the Israelites. You're not. So Moses is your father? Moses, Abraham, David, Isaiah, those are all my fathers, uncles, brothers, etc. like that. All of them. And the ones that are not named. Yeah, yeah. Okay. ISUPK is a mess. They're just teaching a lot of false doctrine. I mean, they teach that it's biblical to still take a tithe. Uh, recently, they said that they do not even believe Jesus Christ is God. Well, really, they've always held to that logic. Most Hebrew Israelites do, okay? But they don't believe in an eternal hell. They basically teach annihilationism, meaning a person to just be destroyed and cease to exist. Okay, I don't see where they get that from. That's nowhere in the scriptures. But in part six, I'll go deeper into how the bloodlines have been scrambled. Here, I'll just give you short version. The bloodlines have now been stretched over a 6,000 year span. So that's leaving much room for compromise of the DNA. For example, it's possible for a white man to produce offspring with a black woman and the child comes out black. So now that 6,000 years have passed in our genealogy, and of course there was the transatlantic slave trade, for you to be a son of Abraham, all 6,000 years or 4,000 plus years of genealogies will have to trace back to Abraham. And what I believe, which is most common with so-called black people, okay, according to their skin color, 20% of so-called blacks, somewhere in their bloodline, it may be 14 or 16 generations back, a so-called white man is their forefather, okay? But these camps don't teach the born again, the tares and wheat doctrine. 
anyone who has black skin walking down the street, they're just showing them the charts and then they're basing that on salvation according to a chart. Okay, even if you're Hebrew, you still need to be born again because we no longer are consecrated from the heathen. Okay. That's the Israelites. Okay. Now, okay. whether you um, want to call me, whether you want to call me an Israelite or not, is irrelevant to the text saying all our fathers was under the cloud. That's still only Israelites. Well, I said, well, we must all appear. So will will non-Israel appear before the judgment seat? Yes, all men will appear before God and be judged. Some will be at the mercy seat and most will be at the great white throne judgment. But let me say this. The reason why I go so hard on the so-called white man and thus far I have in this series, that's why it's titled White Supremacy is a Package Deal. Number one, they have the most to give up when it comes to this salvation thing. Okay, and I've talked about that thus far in this series. Okay, I, I suggest those of you who are watching this for the first time, go back and watch part one and then just follow it sequentially. All right. But number two, they're already the weaker vessels. And as I've established already in this video, according to Romans chapter three, verse two, they're at a disadvantage because the oracles of God was not committed to them. Okay, the scriptures say that God has not dealt with any other nation as he's dealt with Jacob. He shows his word to Jacob, all right? And one of the ways that the children of Israel were able to understand the ways of the Lord is through suffering, okay? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he suffered for our sake, all right? In his creation, the original man made in his image and likeness went through similar suffering during the transatlantic slave trade when our people were castrated, all right? So one of the ways to identify if you are a Hebrew, I would say even more than your skin color, is through what you've been through, okay? Your persecution that you've been through in your life, all right? That's the mark, but really, of a true believer in general. Yeah, non-Israelites, their judgment is already set. Their judgment is to serve well, Israel. Appear before the judgment seat. I'm going to answer the question again. Their the non-Israelites judgment is already set. The ones that are getting judged as far as the ones that are getting judged are Israelites to see if in the house of God, there will be the vessels of honor or dishonor. So the Israelites that, so like, for example, Matthew 5 and 19, when Christ says, whosoever break the least commandment and teach men so shall be the least in the kingdom. That's the judgment that second Corinthians is talking about. But whosoever shall teach and do the commandments, the same shall be the great. In second Timothy two and 20, it says in every great house, there are vessels of gold and silver, wood and earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. They get judged. And then that's how they sit in the kingdom. The other nations either serve the children of Israel or die. So their judgment is set. Now the vessels of gold are the Israelites. The scriptures say all the nations, all the other nations are as spittle. They're like a drop in the bucket. Okay. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 27, the Canaanite woman pleaded with Christ after he told her it is not good to give what is holy to dogs. And she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. You see that? But Christ saw her faith. Okay. He saw her faith and said, your faith has made you well. So the scriptures say, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But the Canaanite woman, who was not an Israelite, she had faith. So she was able to please God. Okay, and then had she died in that moment, she would have salvation. That's a part of pleasing God unto death as well. You need to have faith as a correct posture for death. Okay, you got to die right. You have to have the correct posture for death to die right. Now, pointing to what he said, he is right that in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 12, it does say nation and kingdom, which does not serve you shall perish. Okay, that's talking about the Israelites. Okay, the Gentiles will still have to serve the Israelites, even if they have salvation. Okay, that's a non-negotiable. Because they're first in this kingdom, 
and man cannot outlive the sin debt. Okay, he doesn't have enough years in his life to pay back what he has stolen, especially when he has taken life more than any other species in the history of mankind. Okay, talking about the so-called white man. However, the lake of fire does not discriminate. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. The lake of fire does not discriminate. You can be a Hebrew Israelite and go to hell. And some of you ninjas are going there. And there will be so-called white people in the kingdom. Okay, there will be Chinese in the kingdom. All right? It's not that, you know, God will be mocked. Because the scriptures say, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man reaps, he will sow. So they will have to suffer in this life if they want to inherit eternal life in the next kingdom. Okay? And Christ already instructed them to go sell everything they own and give it to the poor. So you guys are not talking about the scriptures when Christ was rebuking the rich. Okay, because even when Christ walked the earth, the Hebrews were in captivity. So why would he be talking in that manner to an afflicted people who don't have the wealth and the resources? This is why God anointed Paul an apostle. Paul was a Roman citizen. And he was preaching the gospel to wealthy people. Okay, Christ as well. Christ was crucified by the Romans. That's why he was telling them, woe to you who are rich. He knew that they would take his life. Well, they didn't take his life. He gave up his life, but you get what I'm saying. In their heart, they were responsible for his death. They'll be judged for his death. Okay, it was some, some ninja in the comments arguing with me about so-called white man receiving salvation. And I learned that this brother had a really dark, evil spirit on him. I mean, for eight hours, he was going back and forth with me about the scriptures. And he didn't disprove anything that I was saying. Okay, I took the time to give him scripture and still he was coming back. That evil spirit inside of him still had him coming back to argue with me over whether or not so-called white people can receive eternal life. I mean, he was so adamant that they cannot be saved. Then I said to him, I said, well, what about the babies? Do they receive salvation? And then he still saying, no, they can't receive salvation. I, that's when I knew that was a demon. Okay, he was giving me the runaround when Matthew chapter 19, verse 14 says, suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come to me. Okay, so these are children that were able to walk. So these children were probably five or six years old. Now, there are some who've argued over the age of accountability. We don't know the exact age. Okay, only the Most High knows that. But I said to this brother, I said, babies. You're going to tell me that babies are condemned to the lake of fire or they're just destroyed and they're going to cease to exist? He said, yeah, that's why I knew that was a demon inside of him. Okay, as I started out this video saying, a false balance is an abomination. Okay, I've already explained why I go so hard on white supremacy in this series. Okay, they have the most to give up and they also have a faith deficit. So for those of you who are watching these, this video, Take notes on that, okay? And also, reminding God of his word. I will add that as a third thing, okay? Because me as an individual, I don't want to be persecuted by someone who's high-minded and think that they don't have to do any work to get into the kingdom. And I'm sitting here doing the work, showing myself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? And here's someone living in the fatness of the land, they're sending their kids to the best colleges, going on their golf courses, taking their kids to softball practice and karate practice. And then you think you're going to inherit the kingdom of God? And that's not written in the word? No, you got another thing coming. <laughs> Get your life, you know. You, you, you a fool if you think that. Okay, Christ already said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so now I'm giving you the package deal as the Holy Spirit gave this to me. The package deal is they can inherit eternal life. 
They just got to sell everything they own. I'm talking about those not poor so-called whites. OK, but the ones who are living off the blood money. OK, James chapter five talks about this. OK, they have to sell everything they own and give it to the poor. Then they can inherit eternal life. That's what the Bible says. OK, but he's telling me that even if they do that, they still got to come and be servants. Then after they serve in the kingdom, the most high is just going to permanently destroy them. That's a demon, bro. And if you listening, yeah, you got a demon and you need to repent or else you going to the lake of fire. Then after that, I'm eight hours in, he's still arguing. Then he turned his venom towards me, talking about you taking up the time on the channel. You just talking monotone. How you going to come and try to tell me how to run my channel? <laughs> the nerve of this Negro. You know, and that's the problem with our people. That's why I can't go too far into all that Hebrew Israelite crap. Because you brothers foul, man. And a lot of y'all, the reason why we in the position we in to this day. Okay. Yeah, we got Abraham and Moses as our forefather. But that's not our direct lineage. Some of y'all have some ignorant bastards in y'all bloodline. And because they doing foolishness and marrying Canaanite women and doing all this blasphemy and the most high telling them not to and y'all still saying polygyny is not sinful and we done disobeyed the most high so you expecting to disobey the most high without penalty no you gonna be in for a rude awakening too the devil be sending these brothers to argue just to drain your strength okay but it's not happening all right but anyway that's what I have. White supremacy is a package deal. Part five. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.